Good morning, guys. Welcome. Uh, today I'm going to be going over section A in our catalog. That includes back pressure valves, PR valves, and we'll also cover the ounces valves. If you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Um, so we're going to go ahead and dive right into this presentation. All of our Section A regulators are integrated valves, and what that means is that the pilot and the valve body are one piece. Um, as you can see from this picture here, um, the spring in that upper portion of the valve uh, is connected to the body, uh, which is different from some of our control valves which the control valve is standalone from the pilot or whatever is controlling it. Um, a control valve by itself won't do anything until it's told what to do by a pilot. You don't have to add pieces onto the valve to get it to work. Okay. So back pressure valves are used to hold back pressure on vessels and equipment. Um, and that just helps in the movement of the liquid. Um, if you think about a separator like this, um, if it didn't have any pressure being held on it, when that dump valve opened up, that fluid would not be forced out of that piece of equipment. Um, and sometimes there's several pieces of equipment that liquid has to move through, and if you don't have that back pressure, it's not going to force that liquid out and, you know, cross maybe 50, 60 feet of pipe and then up into another vessel. Um, so holding back pressure is very critical uh, for the flow of liquid through production equipment. Um, think of it like a water gun. If you put water in a water gun and pull the trigger, nothing's going to come out of the water gun. It has to be pressurized. You have to pump air into it. That way when you squeeze the trigger, that liquid is forced out. Um, and that just aids in the separation process. To go over the function of this valve, we'll watch a quick video that'll explain how that's working. This valve monitors upstream pressure. To adjust the set point, turn the bolt on top. The spring pushes down on the diaphragm assembly, which positions the pilot plug. The pilot plug then allows gas from the upstream to push down on the diaphragm. The flow through this valve is from underneath the plunger. The flow pushes up on the plunger as the gas is pushing down on the diaphragm. Because the diaphragm has a larger surface area than the plunger, the same pressure can hold the valve in a closed position. You have now reached your back pressure set point and the valve will begin regulating the pressure. If the set point is exceeded, the upstream pressure pushes up on the diaphragm assembly, closing off the pilot plug. This allows gas to be vented from the top of the diaphragm and the upstream pressure to be regulated. So now we can go over the function of the valve and how it operates. Um, the red pressure is upstream pressure, and that is communicated um, through the tubing to underneath the spring. Um, so you can see the red pressure is up underneath that diaphragm, and the spring is your adjustment point. So the more tension you put on that spring, the further down you adjust the screw, the more back pressure it's going to hold. Um, whenever that upstream pressure is able to overcome the tension of the spring, uh, so you're above your set point, um, it's going to lift that diaphragm assembly, which lifts the, the pilot plug and the pilot plug seats. So the larger ball is going to seat and the smaller ball is going to eventually raise up off of its seat, which is going to vent the yellow pressure. Um, and that yellow pressure is keeping that valve closed. So as soon as it vents that pressure off, um, the upstream pressure, the red pressure that's pushing up on that seat is able to push open the valve and it'll start relieving that pressure. Now once that pressure um, comes back down below your set point or that spring is able to overcome and push against the upstream pressure, um, it's going to seat the small ball and it's going to keep pushing down and eventually unseat the larger ball, which is going to allow upstream pressure to um, fill that cavity where the yellow pressure is, and that's going to close the valve. So you have the, the upstream pressure pushing up on the seat, but then you also have the same upstream pressure that fills that cavity, but because that cavity is a larger surface area, it's able to hold that valve closed even with that, that pressure pushing up on the seat. 
just because it's a larger area, it creates more force to hold the valve closed. Eventually, this valve will get to the point where it's making very fine adjustments. Um, the pilot plug does not have to move very far um, to vent that pressure to open the valve. Um, but it'll get to that point where it's just, it's hanging out, it's throttling right at your set point. It doesn't make large swings in pressure. So right below where it says oil, where the stem is going through the body, how, yep. is, there a, uh, is there a packing in there that prevents the oil from getting down in your oil line? Right, there is. There's an O-ring. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a communication hole that's drilled uh, right where that stem goes through and basically allows that oil just to sit on that stem uh, to keep it lubricated. Um, but that O-ring in there uh, it has an O-ring and two Teflon backups um, that keeps that oil from getting into the gas stream. Now that you guys have basic understanding on the function of this valve, we'll go over some troubleshooting and common problems that we see with this valve in the field. The most common issues that we see with this valve is wet gas or trash uh, getting into the pilot plug area of the valve. Um, they're very small seating surfaces and it doesn't take a lot to keep those from seating and sealing off. The seating surface, especially on the smaller ball, is so small, uh, any liquid or trash that gets on that is going to keep it from seating off. And, and so that's, that's the biggest issue uh, that we fight with these valves. What can you do in the field if the pilot plug gets any moisture in it or any trash in it? Is there something that you can do to try to clear it without yeah. taking the valve apart? Yeah, absolutely. So if there's moisture getting in the pilot plug, um, it's not going to be able to seat. Um, so it's going to be continuously venting. Um, it's not going to control your set point like you want it to. Um, something you can do without taking the valve apart uh, is run the adjustment screw down quickly and then back out quickly. Basically what that does is it forces the valve to change position because it's trying to control a different set point. And sometimes you can get that will cause the, the valve to exhaust gas quickly enough to, to blow out that liquid, to clear any trash or liquid that's sitting on the pilot plug. If there's quite a bit of liquid or a big piece of trash, um, sometimes you can't get that to clear. And then you have to open up the valve and, and do maintenance on the valve that way. Another common issue is uh, not removing the plug out of the oil bowl when the valve is first installed. All of our valves have a, an oil bowl and that's just to keep the stem lubricated. When we ship these things, it'll have a plug in it like this one does. And that's just to keep, you know, when they're in the box, they're on their side, that's just to keep the oil from spilling out. And so when you take this out of the box and install it, you've got to make sure to take out that plastic plug um, because if you don't, um, this valve won't be able to exhaust um, that gas and it won't be able to open up. So it's just going to stay shut. It's not going to move. It may move once, but it's, it's not going to move again. Next, we're going to talk about the pressure reducing valve or PR valve. Um, it functions um, a lot like the back pressure valve, um, but it's controlling downstream pressure. Uh, the most common applications for this valve would be um, a suction controller on a compressor. Uh, so you're taking uh, higher upstream pressure and reducing it down to the uh, suction uh, set point of that compressor. So a PR valve would be used in any application where you want to reduce pressure. Um, so not only a suction control valve, but if you were going from 250 PSI and you were going down to poly pipe and you needed it to be below um, 80 PSI. This would reduce that pressure down, so that way you don't overpressure the poly pipe. Um, just any time you need to reduce pressure and regulate downstream uh, is when you would use a PR valve. You can see on, on this picture here, uh, red is still upstream. Uh, the blue is downstream pressure. And so you have a piece of tubing that communicates the downstream pressure to underneath the spring. So the spring is still the adjustment point. Um, if Downstream pressure um, is overcome by that spring, so that means you're uh, below set point. 
um, then the, the pilot plug um, is going to seat the small ball and unseat the large ball, which puts the red pressure or upstream pressure underneath that diaphragm. And, and that's going to allow that valve to open. Um, as your downstream pressure then begins to rise back up to set point, uh, once you get to set point, the blue pressure or downstream pressure will overcome that spring. Um, the large ball will be seated and the smaller ball will be unseated, allowing the yellow pressure to vent the atmosphere, um, which will then close that valve. Uh, so once you get up to set point, the valve is going to close, and then once you get below set point, the valve is going to open. Um, this one's got a little bit more tubing on it, uh, looks a little bit more complicated, uh, but it functions basically the same way as the back pressure valve. This valve controls downstream pressure. To adjust the set point, turn the bolt on top, which will compress the spring. The spring pushes down on the sensing diaphragm assembly, which positions the pilot plug. The pilot plug then allows gas from upstream to flow under the motor valve diaphragm. The pressure is controlled under this diaphragm to position the plunger to any changes in flowing conditions. If the set point is exceeded, then the downstream pressure pushes up on the sensing diaphragm assembly, closing off the pilot plug. This allows gas to be vented from underneath the motor valve diaphragm and the downstream pressure to be regulated. A constant downstream pressure is then set. Because the diaphragm has a larger surface area than the plunger, the same pressure can hold the valve in a closed position when needed. You'll notice that the pilot plug assembly in this valve is flipped from what it is in the back pressure valve. In the back pressure valve, the larger ball is on top and the smaller ball is underneath. Um, this one is, is flipped the other way. Um, there's one more piece of tubing on the pressure reducing valves um, and the spot where it vents the, um, the gas either opening or closing the valve is up top so it's in a different place as well. Next we're going to go over the pressure reducing and back pressure ounces valves. Um, they operate all in the same way as the regular PR and BP valves do. Um, the biggest differences are the size of the sensing diaphragm and the size of the um, adjustment spring. Uh, so the adjustment spring is much lighter, it's smaller, and the sensing diaphragm is much larger. You can see there's, uh, this one here is a pressure reducing ounces valve. Um, so the sensing area that that downstream pressure is communicated to, that diaphragm, uh, is very large and that's just to, to get it to be able to sense very uh, light pressure ounces. It's got to have a large surface area to create enough force to move that spring. Uh, the back pressure would be the same way, except we'd be pulling upstream pressure to that diaphragm to sense upstream pressure. The troubleshooting for these are all the same um, as the other valves. Wet gas is the biggest problem. For the ounces PR valve or the OPR, um, you would be using this for a suction control on a low suction compressor um, or anytime you want to reduce down to ounces or just a few pounds. Um, for the back pressure valve ounces uh, or the OBP, you would use that to hold back pressure on uh, tanks um, or you could use it uh, to hold back pressure on very low pressure uh, equipment. There's three spring options available for this valve. There's a two and a half pound, a five pound, and a 20 pound spring. Uh, the 20 pound spring goes from one pound to 20 pounds. The five pound spring goes from one ounce to five pounds. And the two and a half pound spring goes from a half an ounce to two and a half pounds. So depending on your control pressure, uh, that'll determine what spring uh, that you put in this valve. Um, so you can have for the PR valve, if, for example, uh, you can still have up to 300 pounds um, on the upstream side of the valve body and still 
uh, reduced down to ounces. It's not going to control very well without high of a pressure drop, um, but the valve body is the same as all the other regulators. It's just the pilot portion that's different. Next, we're going to go over liquid back pressure valves. Um, this can be used in applications where you have extremely uh, wet gas in the valve body and you need to bring in an outside supply of dry air or gas to operate the valve or anytime you're holding liquid back pressure on a vessel or a pump. Um, what's good about this valve being used in liquid applications is it has an outside source of gas so where you see the purple gas coming in you would bring that in from an air compressor or a higher drier spot where you can get good dry gas from or air. It's the back pressure valve with an outside source of instrument air. Converting a regular back pressure valve to one with outside supply like this one uh, is fairly simple. There's just a couple of pieces you need. So you can go from an AAR, which is a back pressure valve, to an AEM, which is the liquid back pressure valve. Uh, fairly easy. Uh, so if you're fighting wet gas um, and having issues because of that, you can convert to a, a liquid back pressure valve and solve a lot of those problems. You just need to make sure that the elastomers you have in your valve are compatible with whatever's in your fluid. We offer um, a lot of different elastomers. Um, if you already have an existing valve that's having issues with failed diaphragms or, or O-rings, um, you can just buy the repair kit with the appropriate elastomer type in it and, and kit the valve and, and solve those issues. These regulators are available uh, one inch through six inch um, and the pressure rating is 300 pounds for threaded connection or 250 for flange connection. Thank you guys for coming out for this training. Uh, if you guys think of questions uh, later on, uh, you can email us or you can uh, give us a call at our store number and we can answer those questions or set up more training for you guys. Thanks for watching this training. If you found this information helpful and you'd like this training in person for you or your team, contact your local Kimray store.